All right, so this is going to be a video that will teach you how to set your version, your copy of Cura up so that you can uh, get slicing and printing. This video is made for a friend of mine who needed help with a Wanhao Duplicator i3. Your printer is obviously going to have different stats than this, and there might be some different, some real differences. But what I did first is I went to the website. You got to figure out what the total printing dimensions of your printer is. So I went to the website of the Wanhao Duplicator i3, and I found out that it was a 200 for X, 200 for Y, and 180 for Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over in here, and I'm going to go to Kira, and I'm going to go to Add New Machine. And then I'm going to go over here and see this, what it says, Other. We're going to go to Other and custom and I'm gonna put in whatever you want your printer to be called I'm gonna call mine duplicator just so you'll, you'll know the name that's what's important so I'm gonna put in my dimensions 200 200 and 180 and remember these are gonna be different for each printer because each printer has a different size now for the one how duplicator i3 it is 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle so I put 0 0.4 0 0.5 is the larger size but you know you could have anything you need to look that up um, it has to do with the nozzle on your hot end. So if you had a J-head, you'd want to look up um, the order that you made on the J-head, and it'll tell you what size that nozzle is. Okay, so um, for this case, we do have a heated bed on this thing. And this the center, unless you have a Delta printer, don't check this center bed at 000. 000, 000 for us should be in the front left corner. So I'm going to finish that. Now, if you don't see this stuff popped up, what you need to do, first of all, before you do anything, go to print one or print all at once. Okay, that's pretty important. Print all at once, and go to machine, and you're going to set it up. And and uh, oh, sorry, uh, over here we're expert. You want to change this from quick print to f to switch to full settings. Okay, so once you have the full settings open, you're going to want to set your layer height. Um, just a good starting one would be 0 0.2 millimeters, kind of a compromise between speed and uh, finish now look remember how earlier we talked about the nozzle was 0 0.4 whatever your nozzle is you want to make your shell thickness a multiple of that it's like for example since mine's 0 0.4 if i want this printer to do one lap for a shell that's one layer thick or uh, one lap around it's going to be 0 0.4 if i want two i'm going to double that to 0 0.8 if i want three laps make a really strong part 1.2 or four laps heck i could do 1.6 now listen, if you had a 0 0.5 nozzle, you'd want to use multiples of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, or whatever. So it just depends on what nozzle you have. You want to make this a multiple of that. For a starting setting, just put 0 0.8, two laps around. Now look, remember how here we said that the layer height was going to be 0 0.2? That means that every layer that the printer stacks on top of there is going to have a thickness of 0 0.2 millimeters. So what does that mean for us? What you're going to do here is you're going to go down here, and since the shell thickness on the sides is 0 0.8, I'm going to change that to 0 0.8 here to make it about the same thickness. And what that means is we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, because 0 0.2 times 4 is 0 0.8. So it makes sense to have, and you can read this here, it makes sense to have this as a multiple of your layer height. The fill density. If you've ever seen a 3D printed part, when they break it open on the inside, there's like a honeycomb, or in this case, a grid, so that you don't actually fill it in solid with plastic and waste all your plastic, and also make the part brittle. Uh, they make it uh, kind of semi-hollow. If you want it to be more strong, you can increase this. For now, I would leave that at 20% just to get started. Okay, now here's the weakness of the Wan Hao duplicator. It's a great printer at an amazing price, but the problem is, is that you're sacrificing a little bit of the print speed with it. What I would do right here for print speed is I would set that for 40 for now. There's some more advanced settings we're going to do because we want actually the first layer to go much slower so it sticks better. And we want the outside, the part we actually see, that outside lap that it takes around to go slower so that part looks really nice for us to look at. We'll do that in later though. Okay, I have found that 210 and 70, uh, I usually go 210 and 55 for PLA. I, and, and if you're new, you should probably start with PLA. ABS can be a little bit more tricky, okay? So we're gonna go 40 millimeters for the print speed, 210 for the bed temperature, or for the print temperature, and about 55 uh, degrees Celsius for our uh, bed heated bed temperature. Just a sec here, let me pause this. There. So the next setting that they have down here is support type. 
you don't need to change this unless you have a challenging print that has a lot of overhangs that need to be they need to build something up to hold them up don't worry about that for now platform adhesion type again i wouldn't worry about that right now when you're new we just want to get this going this is a big deal the filament diameter has to be changed to 1.75 or you know your printer might be different if you might have three millimeter or 2.85 but most of them nowadays are 1.75 the wanhao duplicator i3 is definitely 1.75 you don't need to mess with the flow. If, if you've noticed that it's not putting out enough plastic and you think you could use more, you could change this to like 101 and it'll print out 1% more. It'll put out more 1% more plastic. For now, just leave it at 100%. That was be one, which means it's at the regular setting. It's gonna multiply by one and we know multiplication by one doesn't do anything. So just leave that alone. But it is vital that this gets set to 1.75. Otherwise, it's not gonna uh, shell out nearly enough plastic. Hey, the nozzle size should already be set from the wizard. I had it at 0 0.4. Your printer might be different. Okay, now here's a, here's a, this one. Change this to the retraction speed to 25 mil, uh, millimeters per second and only two millimeters. Um, I'm gonna go real quick over this. A retraction is when, sometimes the printer has to print in one place and move to another spot without printing and then print over there. So in between, it doesn't want leaky plastic to ooze out. So what it does is it retracts, which means it sucks the filament back up, which reduces pressure in the hot end and it makes it prevents it from leaking while it's moving when you don't want it to print. So just for now, 25 and two works good for that. Okay, now initial layer thickness. The first layer that goes down, here's the problem. 3D printers have that bed and you have to level it exactly. But no matter how hard we try, we can't ever get it exactly, exactly perfect. So what we're gonna do, and so when you don't get it exactly right, but you get it pretty close, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the first layer is gonna be a bigger layer than normal. And that'll kind of compensate for those irregularities with the printing surface. So you see, if we had a very thin layer there, it might not fill in the little gaps or you know those little bumps that might be exist on the surface. Um, so we're gonna change it to 0 0.3. So basically, all the other layers are gonna be 0 0.2, except for the first one's gonna be 0 0.3 thick. I recommend the initial line wear width at 125%. That works well for me. It just means it's gonna make bigger, fatter lines on the first layer, so it can kind of fill in those irregularities that we just discussed. Forget this, forget this. Those are, those are not necessary. You don't need to worry about those. Now, here we go down here. Okay, 150 is a little bit fast for what I would be doing with my duplicator. Just to be safe, I drop that down to 90 right away. That's the travel speed when it's not printing, when it's just moving around. And then when it says bottom layer speed, I would reduce this down to minimum of 15, or no, about down to 15. If I have problems with it sticking on the first layer, I'll, I'll reduce that down to 10. So, you know, 10 or 15 for the bottom layer speed. That just means instead of printing at this setting, 40, for the first layer, it's gonna print at 10. And then down here, infill speed, if you want the infill to fill in faster, you could do that. I don't really mess with that too much, but the outer shell, I like to turn it down to 20. And it makes it, it makes it so that the rest of the inside prints a little faster at the 40 millimeters per second and 20 millimeters around the perimeter really makes it look nice with a good finish. Again, if you think I'm crazy and you think that's too slow, go ahead. You know, you can experiment with these settings. But what I found with my Wanhao duplicator and I have the first version is if you mouse over this, it says right here, you are printing at 3.2 millimeters per second, uh, cubed per second. If you ever get that up around five millimeters cubed per second, your, your duplicator is likely to skip steps and you won't be able to do it. So however, that, that depends how much plastic is coming out, it depends on the layer height and the speed to which you're printing. So you'll have to play with that. But if you're ever getting a lot of skips and my Wanha duplicator usually skips anytime I get it over about 4.0 millimeters cubed per second. So anyways, that's, uh, there's that part. The minimal layer time, I would probably turn that up a little bit because the fan on the duplicator is not quite as robust as we'd like. And so this should be fine. At this point, you should be pretty much ready to go. Now, another thing at the end of this I wanted to show you guys is how to calculate, see this cost right here, 0 0.75? That represents 75 cents. So let's take a look here. Let's load up a file here. And recent model files. And I'm gonna use this Bluetooth mount that I made for a Bluetooth circuit board, little buttons that slide in and out of there so you can press whatever you want. So there it is. And this is telling me it's, it's gonna take three hours and 54 minutes. It's gonna take 11.27 uh, meters long of filament, but it's gonna cost 77 cents. Here's how you do this part. It won't happen naturally. You have to go here and you're gonna go file and go to preferences. 
And if you're using PLA, you want this set to 1240 because that's the default setting. You can read it. I just got this from this information right here. But this is what you're going to do. So I'm on Amazon and I'm using Hatchbox Filament, which currently is about $22.98 per kilogram. They don't sell it by meter on there, it's by the kilogram. So there we go. I have that. And um, I always like to have this on Pronerface UI, by the way, so I can mess with some things in there. So I'm going to press, uh, I don't like to do this. I don't like to send statistics. So I'm going to press OK. And then now, anytime we put an object, see this costs 77 cents to print. Let's take a look at something else. Um, let's look at this, uh, one of my students' quadrupeds. Whoa, way too big. That's no good. But, but whatever. So basically, as soon as you put something on here, it'll tell you, after it gets done slicing it up, it'll tell you, uh, um, basically how much it's going to cost and then when you're done you can save your g-code to export it to your and, and then point the computer towards your SD card and then save it to the SD card and then you can print it on the Wanhao duplicator